What's going on guys? In this one I thought I'd change it up a little bit and make one of my favorite salads, which is a Vietnamese chicken salad. It's so easy to make, tastes absolutely incredible and it's perfect for any time of the year. Also in this one I'm gonna show you a few different preparation and cooking techniques, so please sit back, relax and enjoy. All right, guys, let's start this off with 40 grams or 1.4 ounces of peanuts to which we can give a quick rough chop to break them up a little bit. And I suggest not making them too fine, otherwise they'll burn in the next step. Talking about that next step, chuck your nuts onto a baking tray lined with parchment paper, spread them out a little bit to let them breathe, then make your way over to a preheated oven set to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and roast for five to six minutes or until golden brown. And once that's done, these can then be left to cool whilst we prepare the rest of the recipe. To make a delicious dressing, pour two and a half tablespoons or 50 milliliters of fish sauce into a small saucepan, along with one quarter of a cup or 60 milliliters of water to mellow out the fish sauce, and two and a half tablespoons or 47 grams of castor or fine sugar to help give this a sweet caramel flavor. Next, we're going to need one clove of freshly peeled garlic to which we can crush using the side of our knife with the blade's edge facing down. This is going to activate the allicin compound, which gives garlic its strong flavor, and this can then be added to the saucepan. We're also going to need one large lime that can be sliced in half, reserving half to serve with our salad and the other half into our dressing for that nice citrus kick. Last but not least, add in three kaffir lime leaves, which will give us the most beautiful flavor and aroma. Then make your way over to the stovetop and whack this onto a high heat. With this now, give it a stir to help the sugar dissolve and of course allow those flavors to become friends. And whilst giving it the occasional stir, bring it to a simmer. Once that's achieved, give it one final stir, then turn this off the heat pour it into a fresh vessel and place it into the fridge ensuring it's completely cold before serving. Let's now place a large saucepan of water onto the stovetop over a high heat, allowing the water to come to a boil. Once boiling, gently place in two large chicken breasts with a combined weight of 500 grams or 1.1 pounds and poach these for 10 minutes and this technique is perfect for salads as the breasts will be really juicy and absorb all of our dressing. After 10 minutes, we're going to turn this off the heat and allow these to sit in the water for two minutes to finalize the cooking. And this is also a different step to resting like you would with a steak, but in water instead. Once rested, we can then place the chicken onto a plate to cool for the time being. And with the water, this can be saved for a chicken stock. As for the rest of the salad, get yourself one large washed carrot to which we can top and tail, slice it in half and pop half aside for a second. Slice a thin strip off the side of the carrot, which will make it safer and more stable. Then come through and make thin, even-sized strips. And this does take a little bit of practice, but it's a great way to hone those knife skills. Once that's done, stack up two or three of those strips and thinly slice them into matchstick cuts. And the proper terminology for this is julienne, which is cutting food into short, thin strips. Next, we're going to need 100 grams or 2.8 ounces of both white and red cabbage. And to make it easier to cut, separate the layers into halves or thirds. With these now, slice them up as thin and consistent as possible. And the terminology for this cut is chiffonade, which is the preparation of a shredded or very thinly sliced leaf vegetable used as a garnish, salad or soup. For the last bit of veg prep, here is one white onion, which can be substituted for red onion. And to this, slice off the tip and root, slice it in half, and then peel off the skin, saving the scraps for a stock. With the onion set in the half moon position, slice it as thinly as you can to create wafer thin strips and towards the end, lay it flat and continue, which will prevent it from wobbling and someone cutting themselves. And also don't worry about speed, that comes after precision. Now to create a quick pickling brine, pour half a cup or 125 milliliters of rice wine vinegar into a mixing bowl. Add in one and a half tablespoons or 30 grams of castor or fine sugar to add a little sweetness, along with one teaspoon or five grams of sea salt flakes, and then give it a quick mix with a whisk to combine the ingredients, which won't fully dissolve the sugar or salt, but it will start to slightly dissolve from the acid in the vinegar. With this now, we can add in the julienne carrot to the brine, along with a thinly sliced white or red onion, and also 100 grams or 3.5 ounces of bean sprouts. Get your hands in there or use tongs, it's up to you, and give this a really good mix, ensuring all of the veg is coated in that brine, and once mixed through, allow this to sit for five minutes to start to slightly pickle. We can now thinly slice our chicken, and this is still warm, which is completely fine, just as long as it's not boiling hot, which will start to wilt all of the other salad ingredients once mixed, then that's definitely not what we want. Once the chicken is sliced, you can leave it sliced or you can slightly tear it up into smaller pieces and strips. And doing this also helps the dressing seep more into the chicken as there's lots of little holes and openings for it to go in. 
To put this all together, let's add both chiffonaded cabbages into a large mixing bowl and add in the pickled vegetables, draining as much of the brine as possible. Next, add in 15 grams or 0.5 ounces of both roughly picked coriander or cilantro, as well as torn mint leaves. Tip in the sliced or torn chicken breast, then grab a sieve, placing it over the salad to then pour in the cold dressing, discarding the remains. Get your hands in there nice and deep like or use tongs and mix everything together really well ensuring each and every ingredient is broken up and evenly distributed. To serve this up, I recommend using a bowl to catch any dressing that may come out the bottom and then when serving salads it's all about height to make it look bigger than it actually is. This can now be garnished with some thinly sliced bird's eye chilli which is optional and that's why I didn't show the prep for it. Sprinkle over the roasted peanuts that we prepared at the start to give this a nice texture and subtle flavour. And I'm actually going to cheat here and sprinkle over some store bought fried shallots. Place the remaining lime on the side and this then leaves us with this beautiful salad that has amazing flavour, colour and texture and also in the preparation we use quite a few different techniques to achieve this. The only thing left to do now is make all of this worthwhile and that is we can then Squeeze over the lime to give this a beautiful citrus freshness and we can then dig in. So there we have it. This recipe right here serves two to four people and like most of my recipes it can easily be double, tripled and so on or halved if you wanted to make less. To store it, it will last one day in the fridge once it's been dressed. If it's undressed, it will last up to four days and the dressing on its own will also last up to two months. So it's up to you what you want to do with it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button, comment, share, do all of that stuff. It really does help my channel out and consider subscribing along with hitting that bell notification next to it so you never miss one I upload. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe and enjoy.